Hi there, this is just a demonstration of how to make a stepper motor rotate just in one direction with a variable speed over quite a wide range and um, I think uh, it took me some time to find out how to do this and eventually a friend explained it to me so I'm making a short video in case any of you want to do the same thing. It's uh, really very simple once you've uh, cracked it. We've got a rig set up here which has a stepper motor and a uh, micro step driver unit, a battery here to power the motor and a signal generator to provide the pulses necessary to uh, activate the driver to make the motor rotate. Uh, here's our motor. It's designated as NEMA 17. Um, that's just the size of the motor. That's the National Electrical Manufacturers Association of the USA uh, for the size of motor. And that code has been in use for many, many years. Um, so uh, and it's got four wires coming out of it. Some stepper motors have six wires, but it's very easy to find out how to reduce that down to four by connecting some of them together. So um, we move on to the next vital component, which is the driver board. Here's the motor and the microstep driver type M335, which is a very common type which you can get from the Far East at about 20 pounds. Uh, it looks very complicated. Let's have a closer look at the uh, driver unit. Here's a close-up of the driver unit and it looks horribly complicated but it isn't really and uh, going from the top to the bottom on the left you see we've got 12 volts DC in to drive the motor itself. It could be between 12 and 24 volts. Uh, our motor works fine on 12 volts. The next four terminals down are the four wires from the motor which are in pairs. It's easy to sort out which the pairs are. Look online and they'll tell you. The clever bit is what we put in here where it says speed control, which says pull. Uh, that's pulse. We need to put pulses in to make the motor go around. We'll come to that. The bottom four, uh, we are, we d I don't use those in my application, but we will also demonstrate those for you. And these tables over to the right, we'll come to them later. It's very common for a stepper motor to have 200 steps for one revolution. And this motor is like that. That's 1.8 degrees per step, 200, and it will go around once. Now it so happens that in my application I wanted a speed, one of the speeds I wanted was about one revolution per second. So that makes it very easy because if there's 200 steps, we need to feed 200 pulses from the driver unit into this and uh, with any luck it will then rotate once a second. Right, here's the motor, we'll plug the wires in on the, on the, on the plug there. And we'll place it on this piece of plastic for a reason which will soon emerge. The pulses we want to operate our driver have to be a square wave on off. So I select square wave there. And I shall now adjust the frequency to 200 hertz like so. The oscillator is set to 100 millivolts output and that is enough to operate the system. If I increase this knob the output of the oscillator will go from 0 to 100 millivolts so let's do it. And sure enough our motor is going round and you can take it from me it's going round at one revolution per second so all oh, this is pretty easy isn't it? Well there we are but there is something we have to take notice of which is this. Yes, stepper motors are rather noisy. Well, so far so good, apart from that vibration. Well, that's something else we'll have to look at in the future. So now, if it goes once a second at 200 pulses, um, you know, what happens at 400? Well, I've set the generator to uh, 400 hertz. Let's kick it in. And it's going around twice a second. If I crank it up to 600 hertz, it's going around at three times a second. Uh, 800 hertz, it will be going round at uh, four times a second, uh, and 1000 hertz, five times a second, and 1200 hertz, um, that will be six times a second, and so on. And also, the vibration's a lot less than it was before. I see, that's interesting. 
it's coming along all right, but is there anything we can do about that vibration down at the lower speeds? Because that's one of the areas I want to work in. And the answer is yes, because uh, this is where we can do, make some adjustments on the driver board. On the end of the driver, there is a little row of six switches. And if we look on the top of the driver, there were those tables that were printed there. So uh, let's see, if we look at the first one, the top one, we find that um, we can operate switch one and switch two in various combinations. They're both off at the moment, you see, so we have 200 pulses per revolution. But if we switch one on and two off, it'll take 400 pulses to move the motor one rev. And better still, down at the bottom, if we have switch one off and switch two on, we can actually employ 3,200 pulses to make the motor rotate once. Uh, well, I mean, that's bound to be smoother than it was before. OK, we've made the settings, uh, and now on 200 hertz, you see it's only going very slowly. Well, that's because we need to feed in 3,200 hertz, which I'll now do. And there we are. It's now going round once per second. And although there's still some vibration, it's a lot less than it was before. So that's certainly a step in the right direction. The other tables on the top of the unit. This is the second one, and you have to set that for the current that the motor is drawing. Well, this little motor, I've measured the current. It's uh, it's just a two or three hundred milliamps. So I've got switch three and four both switched on uh, because it's a very low current. Uh, so as far as I know, that's a satisfactory setting. Now we come to the last one, which is the decay mode. And at the moment, uh, the switch five and six are both off, so there is no decay. Um, and I'm not quite sure, to be honest, the effect of selecting these different decays. Uh, but I'm going to explain about that now, I hope, because it's now time to uh, sum up. Well, we've skated through that pretty quickly, but there are two things which it is important to emphasise. And one of them is that this big signal generator we've been using, that produces a symmetrical square wave. And the pulses needed for this application uh, really have got um, a duty cycle or a uh, mark space ratio which is asymmetrical. The pulse is quite short and the space between them is relatively long. Um, but it does still work with a, a standard square wave and what you would do to get the right profile of mark space ratio or duty cycle you would use a little chip like say an NE555 timer, they're only 30 pence and with you know two or three resistors, a couple of capacitors and a, a, a potentiometer, all of which would probably cost under two pounds, uh, you can uh, arrange your mark space ratio and make yourself a drive unit with a knob to get your stepper motor going at uh, pretty well whatever speed you like. Um, so that was the one thing I needed to mention and the second one and final one is um, what about those connections on the driver that I didn't use. What are they for? Well, this rotation of the motor was uh, suitable for my application, but I hear you say, well, I want it to go the other way. And that's what these two, DIR, direction, uh, plus five volts, uh, positive and negative. All you need to do is apply five volts here, and the motor will indeed go the other way. And here is a four and a half volt uh, battery. And if I just connect it to those tags, bingo, the motor goes the other way. If I wanted to go take off the voltage, then it goes that way and take off that way and it goes clockwise. So that's that. And that only leaves one more pair of uh, connections to do to, to deal with, which is ENA, which means to enable. And yes, you've guessed. Uh, sorry about the dead cut, but we've now transferred our 5 volts of supply onto the enable uh, pins. And if I complete the circuit and apply 5 volts there, the motor stops. If I wanted to start it again, you disconnect the 5 volts and off it goes. I mean, to be honest, I, in my application, I actually used to start and stop the motor by turning the power on and off, uh, which is not a very elegant way of doing it, but it certainly worked. Well, to be fair, we have skated around a lot of uh, complexities, but uh, when I first got a stepper motor and one of these uh, drivers, um, it was quite baffling. But we gradually got there in the end, thanks to help from friends. And I hope that uh, if you can find some use for stepper motors, which are really unbelievable. I mean, the world is 
it absolutely depends on stepper motors for everything. Um, it's given you a little bit of uh, an insight into it and uh, I wish you success with any project you undertake with stepper motor. Bye!